Join me in welcoming to the program once again, Michael Douglas. Michael, as always, it's a pleasure to welcome you to the program. Nice to see you again, Jim. Thank you. You've been certainly busy since last <laughs> we spoke. I wonder if it's, um, is it an easy trap for an actor to fall into after such tremendous commercial successes as Jewel of the Nile, Romancing the Stone? When you're looking at projects, to think of them in terms of their commerciality. Do you ever find yourself thinking in that way? I never have. Uh, it always looks that way after the fact. <clears throat> but going all the way back to Cuckoo's Nest, uh, that was five years in the making, nobody wanted to make it. China Syndrome, four and a half years, nobody wanted, even Romancing the Stone uh, it looks easy now, but took about five years before we could get it going. So I just like good stories, Jim, you know, and, uh, and figure that if, if I have a good story, and whether I'm producing and acting or only acting in it and surround myself with, uh, with good people and we execute that story well, um, then we'll be in good shape. Mm -hmm. I get the feeling that producing for you is not the burden that it might be for some people, producing and acting at the same time. Well, <clears throat> it was a tremendous burden in the Romancing and Jewel uh, series because we were shooting in third world countries, right. Mexico and Morocco on Jewel and Nile, and had tremendous production problems. And it took away a lot from being able to concentrate only on acting. And that's why the pure joy for me is acting. And in a picture like Fatal Attraction, when you've got a great director like Adrian Lyne, producing team, Jaffe and Lansing, they're all strong that you get a chance to just enjoy, pure enjoyment, the fun of acting with Glenn Close and Ann Archie. Mm -hmm. Is it um, ever a question of, um, I, I, looking at your face, the, the, the joy of, of, of working with these people, of, of recharging the batteries on, on situations like this? Absolutely, because, you know, acting, when I don't have to worry at all about producing, then as an actor, it lets me grow as an actor because all I'm thinking about is myself. Mm -hmm. That's what actors get paid for, is their, their part right. and their character. They're, the director worries about putting the whole thing together, the producer does. And so it's a recharging and also a, a, a growth period. So I enjoy, uh, which is basically in the last year, doing Fatal Attraction and then another movie called Wall Street is coming out at Christmas, uh, Oliver Stone's picture. And for me, uh, it, it, it does uh, focus me much more and give me a chance to grow as an actor and, uh, and, and get back the fun, uh, the fun of what, I'm, what I like doing. What kind of method, or is there a, a particular method you use uh, to prepare for a role? Well, it really depends on how far away or how close the role is to you. In, in Fatal Attraction, uh, basically my, my character has been married for nine years in the picture. I've been married for ten. Uh, the character has a six-year-old daughter. I've got an eight-year-old boy. Uh, so there's, there's certain similarities in that element. Uh, as far as having affairs, well, we'll leave that up for the <laughs> audience. <laughs> I know. Uh in reading about some of the, the great actors, um, Spencer Tracy, for example, it was said that um, you know, he made it look so easy and he never liked to give the impression that he did any sort of preparation and yet everyone found out later that he would take a script and uh, go off for, uh, uh, for months sometime and study that script and come back and, and give the impression, perhaps, that uh, it was all just uh, very easy for him, but yet he knew that script inside out. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I do a lot of work. Uh, I don't think you're ever supposed to show, uh, <clears throat> I think you're never supposed to show that you're acting. And I think, I think one of the, the good aspects that we've created with Fatal Attraction is an environment and a world. And I think that the audiences, rather than watching people perform up on a screen, really understand that family life, they understand those people, they understand how Glenn Close could feel, so you then reach out and you are absorbed by those people, and, and that's, that's what I attempt to do. This is actually a really kind of a very difficult part for me, because it was, it was a good, it was an internal exercise, because it dealt with frustrations, mm -hmm. and it did not have the, the dynamics 
but it was somebody having to deal with an incredible amount of pressure inside. Uh, well, intense also from the standpoint that you're on screen virtually the entire, entire picture. Film, yeah. And that must have been <laughs> rather difficult. It is. Uh, I have, though, pretty much most of my career uh, taken on those kind of roles. And um, without blowing my own horn, I have a respect for what they call leading men. I've always been envious. And Wall Street's a little easier because I kind of come in and have some great parts and you get out. But it's hard. You know, it's hard to be on there the whole time. Audiences can get tired of, um, of their husband or their wives and they can get just as well as they can get tired of watching an actor for uh, two hours on a screen. But I like the challenge. You know, mm -hmm. I, en I enjoy it, but it is. What kind of, um, and I know this is a very difficult thing, to, but what kind of um, reaction do you think audiences will, uh, will give Fatal Attraction? I, I suspect that we're going to give uh, them a combination of uh, feelings. I think one of the nice ways is how the picture shifts from uh, some comedy, uh, some passion, and ultimately, I think we'll scare the pants off. Mm -hmm. And I think also the picture, the picture does have a, uh, a moral. I mean, it, it works almost as a morality play in certain areas. I don't think there's going to be too many people uh, fooling around in Atlanta <laughs> after they see this picture. <laughs> I think you're right. Michael, this has been a, a pleasure, as always, to talk with you. And uh, much success with Fatal Attraction and with the Oliver Stone film. Thank you, Jim. Pleasure. Thank nice to see you. you again. Good to see you. Good. Thanks. Can we have two coffees, please? <laughs> oh, well, I tell you, it's, uh... You want one? No, thank you. No. No, it's funny being a lawyer, you know, it's like being a doctor. Everybody's telling you their innermost secrets. Okay. You just have to be discreet. Oh, God, yeah. Are you? Yeah, my what? Discreet. Yes, I'm discreet. Me too. Can I ask you something? What? Why don't you have a date tonight, Saturday night? I did have a date. I stood him up. That was the phone call I made. Does that make you feel good? Does it make me feel bad? Where's your wife? Where's my wife? My wife is in the country with uh, her parents visiting uh, for the weekend. And you're here with a strange girl being a naughty boy? I don't think having dinner with anybody's a crime. Not yet. But will it be? I don't know. What do you think? Oh, I definitely think it's going to be up to you. Yeah, I haven't made up my mind. <laughs>